news, you have wondered how it all comes together. We can provide at least some of the answers now as we look at the making of the six o'clock news. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. On air, everybody. Split screen with camera four next. Six o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Winchell. Too. Mix Q Sue. Good evening, the headlines at six o'clock. 8.35 a.m., the 7th of May, 1987. BBC Television Centre, London. Just nine and a half hours before that broadcast began. Much of the day's news has yet to happen. This is the story of what did and how it was reported. This newsroom will soon fill with reporters and editors. The one, six and nine o'clock news each has its own producer, director and production team. The home and foreign news desks will soon be commissioning reports for them. We'll see how the six o'clock news is made. Already, from Jerusalem to Moscow and Hong Kong, BBC correspondents are recording events. The morning newspapers reflect what happened yesterday but television must tell today's news today, often while it's still happening. Teleprinters relay the latest news from agencies all around the world, stories soon to be studied and sifted for priority by the various news editors. The one, six and nine o'clock teams all receive their own copies for each to decide what news to tell. Already, the six o'clock tray contains over 50 stories to choose from. What time is the press office in? Nine-ish. All right, I'll call back. OK, thanks. Bye. The home news diary for the day has already been circulated to all these correspondents and reporters. It lists the events and stories previously selected to be covered and by whom. From local elections to Prime Minister's questions, PMQs, and a civil servant's strike, it already contains ten items. Foreign news will have reports about the South African elections, about the Senator Hart scandal, and stories from Bonn, Paris, Venice, Cadiz, and Budapest. It's 9.30. The head of news, Ron Neal, meets his whole news team. Right. Morning, everyone. Everyone's read those printed summaries, and they're now brought right up to the minute. How are you? Say, so, Rugger Ferry inquiry here's from Captain Leary again. Um, McIntyre, due to uh, legal mistakes in Dublin, <coughs> his extradition to the north is unlikely to succeed, and he will probably uh, succeed in his appeal. John Thorne. The producer there, of the six o'clock news, news Bob Wheaton, has eight hours before transmission. Name. Propeller trainer plane, but she won't be riding in the Red Arrows jet itself. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Hi, Triona. It's Liz. There's a press conference at 11 o'clock at High Wycombe. It was a story that the Nine covered yesterday the Martin Butler death. The parents are going to be at a press conference that the police are holding. Uh, will you go along to it? Spare 2-5, 2-5, Fasolinki. A camera crew is needed to record Triona's report. Got a job for you, Baz. It's 11 o'clock for a press conference, so 10.45, at the police station, Queen Victoria Road, High Wycombe. Thank you. Police station. Thanks a lot. Triona Holden's the reporter and Nick Walker is the lighting man. They'll meet you there. There'll be a DR and a link for you. 10 a.m. Bob Wheaton and the 6 o'clock team discuss the options for tonight's programme. I think the top will probably be South Africa again uh, today, or rather today, the victory of Mr. Botha in, in the election there. Whether we can develop it here or not, I don't know. What do you think? I think uh, the one person people do want to hear a little bit from today is, is Worrell. Now, whether that means we have to do a recorded interview in view of the restrictions with him. The problem for us, Nick, is that uh, the bird is up from 5.30. Uh, ITN feed first, that'll take at least 10 minutes. Then we have to feed 
the, the Burke package, that's another five minutes at least. So you can't start doing a two-way, even with Worrell, until about ten to six. I think Burke's package actually will probably be quite long, but it's bound to be sort of two and a half to three minutes of uh, victory scenes, celebrations, reactions from Worrell and people like that. And then another section where he says, so what will it mean for South Africa? What's it going to mean for reform? Um, how will they now handle the disturbances in the townships? And what does it mean for relations with the frontline states? And then he leads into a, into a fairly carefully crafted section, which has got library film and, and, and graphics and so on. Well, we could move on to other things, Jonathan, if you like. Dare one mention one of the perennials, the Chunnel story. Uh, I think he's doing it's very the hard end of to the make month. an interesting story, really, isn't it? Unless one thinks that there really is a threat to the, to the project. That's one of the things that is uh, just hanging fire until after the election. And if she doesn't win the election? <laughs> <laughs> We've got a damn good story. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Eleven o'clock, the press have gathered in High Wycombe to meet the parents of Martin Butler. Reports may be needed for the one, six and nine o'clock news. Triona Holden and her cameraman are in position. We asked about improvements in reporting the news. Nicholas Witchell. The newsreader in the old days would not spend very much time here in the newsroom. He would not be any part of the assembly of the news bulletin news program. That is the, the major physical difference in terms of, 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 of what we or they do. We are here throughout the day. We are totally immersed in the events of the day, we are part of this production team which is putting the six o'clock news together. It means in the afternoon that we are writing and rewriting scripts aided by all the raw material which we have <coughs> amassed in the morning and which we continue amass to amass during the afternoon. I hope that the net result of that is that, particularly in a programme of the length and complexity of the six o'clock news, that it is clearer because we have written the material, we therefore understand it. Um, I hope the theory, at least, is that it makes it more authoritative. In High Wycombe, the press conference has just begun. Officially, um, but uh, the absolute definite was at 6.15 on Saturday when I guess so. What about the other parents in the area? What sort of reaction has there been from them? They've all been very, very good. They've all been terrific. But they must be uh, concerned. They are very concerned. At 11.15, the International Television Network, including Eurovision, is beginning its daily interchange of news films, a kind of swap shop where each country offers its latest stories. Today, it's football and earthquakes from South America and the latest on the elections from South Africa. Most countries record everything and decide later what's worth showing. Yes, RTP. That's all. OK, thank you. Calling TV. Yes, TV listening. I was just going to ask whether there was anything more to come. Yes, uh, something memory is coming. All right. TDF. Now, the latest report from South Africa. Eleven twenty. The crew in High Wycombe have finished recording the press conference and are now setting up outside to shoot Triona's introduction to it. While they get ready, Triona writes out what she's going to say. And at this very moment, probably at least thirty similar BBC news teams are shooting stories all round the world. Foreign news editor John Marney. Well, situation is it's a fairly busy day abroad for us today. The main story, of course, is the aftermath of the election in South Africa. Uh, and Michael Burke will be doing three reports during the day on that. Uh, he'll also be reporting for Newsnight as well. Whenever a story breaks, reporters need instant access to the very latest information on that particular subject. 
to ensure they get it, the news information team constantly clips and files stories from newspapers and periodicals. Only a few months ago, such news clips were delivered by hand to whoever wanted them. Today, that still happens, but much of the process has now been computerized, enabling everyone to keep up to the minute with not only the latest news, but with earlier reports to give them more depth. This machine means that we now quite literally have at our fingertips the equivalent of a bank of news agency teleprinters. At the push of a button, we can, for example, go into uh, the latest story filed here by PA on uh, the schoolboy. We do, however, still take the copy on paper because we still find that the very act of tearing up and sorting through the copy on paper somehow helps us to absorb the news of the day. But this machine has speeded up the operation here in the newsroom in the same way that the electronic camera has speeded up the news gathering operation in the field. Police are investigating a possible link. Police have also renewed their warnings to parents in the area to keep a special watch on their children. In High Wycombe, Triona is now rehearsing her report to camera. Two inches that way. Can you turn towards, towards this way? Yeah. That's it. Uh, we're going to be running the third of our reports on the uh, private prisons in America. This one deals with young offenders and the way, the way they cope with juveniles under this system of privatised prisons. And that's it for the day at the moment. But it's only a quarter to twelve. Yeah. To remember her words, Triona replays her recording of them to herself through an earpiece while she recites them to camera. Repeating what you're hearing isn't as easy as Triona makes it look. The man in the identical picture. They've received two separate calls from women who say they saw him on Saturday afternoon in the area where Martin's body was found near High Wycombe. The man was said to be acting strangely and looked uncomfortable. He's in his 20s and was with a boy who looked like Martin. To make sure this report will get back to Television Centre in London in time for the one o'clock news, a DR, a dispatch rider, is on hand to rush it to a mobile relay station waiting just a mile away. Police say they're particularly anxious to trace the man in the identical picture. They've received two separate calls from women who say they saw him on Saturday afternoon in the area where Martin's body was found near High Wycombe. Police have also renewed their warnings to parents in the area to keep a special watch on their children. How much time are we thinking of spending on it as well? Well, a lengthy intro and a package of four and a half minutes, I think. What's the lead? So or what's your lead? South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. And the elections is a bit thin. We're off to the polls. What are you going to say new about South Africa at six o'clock tonight? It wasn't said on the eight o'clock news this morning. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't well, dispute that we should be doing minutes, five or six four, minutes four, on it yeah. all up. But um, I just, well, we've six I'm... hours to go yet, so we'll, we'll see, right. we'll see what develops. Yeah. Okay. So the computer and see I'm going to have, have a read, and then I shall change my mind as I always do. Well, that's your prerogative, dear. <laughs> right. So I haven't seen I haven't seen the rushes yet for lunchtime. So we pop in and have a look at them, and then. The, uh... Back from location, Triona now has to help edit an expanded version of her film to be ready for the six o'clock news. I mean, at the top of the piece will say, you know, today, dramatic press conference, parents actually added their own appeal for help and for somebody to come and forward. Or, yeah, yeah. You know, something, a similar incident happened to them last year. I don't know, we need to time how long the shot is of them coming in. That's quite and then, long, I think, isn't it? If you came in late into the walking in, also, when they're sitting down, you could um, get away with no cutaway. That's pretty horrific, isn't it? Uh, She's very upset. Chris Kramer, yes, editor, Home News, has just been called to the phone. There could be a major news story. Yep. Yep, what charges? Yep. Time? 
That's true, but thanks a lot. I've just heard that the former Guinness chairman, Ernest Saunders, is in court this afternoon at 2 o'clock on three serious charges, two under the Companies Act and one of attempting to pervert the course of justice. The Saunders story has now become top priority, meaning a quick change of plans to cover it and get pictures back in time for 6 o'clock. Sir David Shookman. Yes, Amanda, David here. David, can I ask you to divert the Bow Street magistrates? What's the story, Amanda? Well, Ernest Saunders has turned up. And he's being charged with perverting the course of justice. The crew's on its way already. It's Albie Charlton. And you'll have a link nearby and a DR. Because we're obviously trying to get some of this on the summary. Thanks a lot, David. I'll talk to you later. Thanks. News at One is taped on one recorder to hear what ITV is covering, while Sue Lawley and Nick Witchell also monitor Radio's World at One and the BBC's One O'Clock News. Do they have the Saunders The Prince and Princess of Wales who spent their money with the children in the Great Ormond Street Hospital in London. They have been finding out how modern surgery can help youngsters who, just a short time ago, would have been beyond the help of medicine. Our court correspondent, Michael Cole, was there. James knows Matthew Anfield says he gets shot. James Wong there, please. Hello, James. Okay. Now, listen, we're not, obviously it, uh, it falls into two parts, doesn't it? Today's story, the charges, what they are, and then a piece about where he's been since the scandal broke. In the photo library, an urgent search is already being made to find the best, most recent pictures of Ernest Saunders and Lester Pickett, both now certain to be needed at six o'clock. Bob Wheaton can monitor such stills and film without even leaving the newsroom. I use this wonderful device to keep me in touch with what's going on. The screen is divided up into, into 16 squares. The touch of a finger, I can go from the general picture there, 16 different sources, into one, like that. That's BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four, and various other channels around the world. I monitor what's going on in the VT channels by just plugging in. There's VT Five. Press that button, and up it comes. They're editing right up to the last moment, very frequently. And the only way you can do that is by having a device like this. There's 16 buttons there that you can press and select the bits you want. On the foreign desk, a new story by satellite. Hello, Keith. Thank you for your telex. I'm seeing the pictures now. It shows a lot of damage after the raid. We'll be able to script that in London and lead into your South Lebanon report. On his computer, Bob Wheaton now types out the first running order for the news, each story with its own page number for quick reference later, when it's faster to shout a page number than a long title. Yes, I'm going to move Rolls-Royce. I think I wanted the top of part two. A comment is needed from Sir James Callaghan about MI5. It's just been found he's not at home. Another quick change of plan. Mike Smart, it's Liz. Can you not go to Kennington Road? I've just heard from the parliamentary office that there is a funeral going on for John Silkin. At the crematorium, Mike Smart faces pressures of both time and tact. The funeral, although attended by many public figures, is a private occasion, demanding respect. Yet somehow, the news needs an interview with either Sir James Callaghan or Neil Kinnock. Hey, well any chance of quick words, No, as you'll see, the day moves on. Why I don't want to make any statement at this juncture. Obviously, I welcome uh, Jim's statement, and it's a very serious statement. And do you think Mrs. Thatcher now can resist any further the calls for? I think you'd better worry? wait and see as the afternoon goes on. You're going to make some statement later on? Oh, I shall be saying, yes. Finished? Got everything? Yeah. yeah. Right. The way to the link. Okay. You're about Long ten minutes away. Yeah, it's not more than ten minutes. Right. Thank you. Thank you.
Mike Smart. Sir. Callahan doesn't, doesn't say anything apart from the fact that he won't say anything and he's at a funeral. Kenneth doesn't say much. He says that he's going to make a full statement later on in the day, or a statement later on in the day, but he does say that he, of course, welcomes the call for an inquiry. Thank you very much indeed, Mike. And that was the six o'clock news on Thursday the 7th of May. In South Africa, Dennis Worrell came within 39 votes of being elected to Parliament. He said, this is the beginning, not the end of an era. This is the first task of the afternoon to get what we call the end quotes out of the way. This is the thing that we end the six o'clock news with and which is in effect our piece of elastic. It's something that we can uh, either contract or stretch at will because we have to bring the program out at a precise time. Um, and today we've got a quote from Dennis Worrell, from the chairman of Rolls-Royce, and we're still looking for a third one. And it's that last one which we hope is a sort of exclamation mark on the day at the end of the program, an exclamation mark or something light with which to end the, the six o'clock news. The day's filming board for just Britain alone now reveals 21 crews and reporters out shooting stories, many for tonight's programme. Sue Lawley, having changed, returns from makeup. With Nick Witchell, she now has to check what's been going on in Parliament during the last few minutes. Are you winding that for the Prime Minister's questions? This video camera down in news graphics has begun taking shots of various documents to be shown in the news. These and many other visual images are relayed to the computer graphics artists for incorporation in the various displays and maps needed in the programme. Here, it's the local elections. What once might have taken a graphics artist several days to draw and paint can today be achieved electronically in a matter of seconds. These production instructions about the MI5 story are translated instantaneously into a design where even the most subtle details in colour, shade and position on screen become possible. Tony, South Africa. I've asked Michael to do a substantial recut. He's going to start his, his report on the overnight celebratory scenes. Uh, and then another section via a piece to camera, which is done sitting by a monitor, um, talking about, so where did South Africa go from, from here? It's that kind of piece, and it could be anything up to four minutes. It may, be, it may only be three, I don't know. Um, shares and pound, who's that? Ian. Ian, sorry, yes, uh, those briefly. I think, again, they're there just for a pace change between uh, packages. The Duchess uh, mm. running goes to goes up with the red arrows. It's quite pretty on ITN at lunchtime. I hope it's good for us. Uh, that's about three or four minutes over, so the options are there. Thank you. These options are made a lot easier with the backup of an enormous video library containing every single news story shot in recent years. This researcher is going to try to help give tonight's South African story more historical depth by retrieving a videotape of the Soweto riots. Edited portions of it may improve the report. I didn't understand that, did you? Mm. She's well prepared, isn't she? Uh, I was just going to say, how on earth can she be prepared for that question? Well, he doesn't give advance it all, notice. No. Somebody is obviously giving her that. Several producers and video editors have now received tapes to work on. They have just a couple of hours to cut them to the precise minutes and seconds by now allocated to each story within the hijacked and burned, some by armed men, some by children. Mostly the vehicles were set on fire and three drivers were slightly injured. The security forces continue to mount normal foot patrols. Normal for some areas of Belfast is a policeman with the soldier escort. What I think we need, whatever we can get away with in the back, what we actually need is a signpost between the two sections, don't we? Because otherwise it looks like... Well, you are, and he is. Can we say, for example, that he came back of his own volition? Was he in a cell last night or uh, in more comfortable accommodation? And so on and so forth. You know, if I can't do much background, then I want more information like that in the piece. Well, I think, I think you're going to get that. It's now just one hour to transmission. 
David, the studio director, discusses the script. I saw that in the script, yeah. yes. Um, I mean, it's just a warning, I think, to you. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the headlines are? Then? Yeah, I think he's virtually I've seen some of them. I've got Saunders, Pickett, South Africa. South Africa, election heart and Duchess, yes. That's, that's okay now. Yeah. Just how difficult will tonight's programme be? Uh, the content of the news seems fairly straightforward. It's just a very flexible running order, so it's half of the course at the moment. No particularly difficult sequences there at the moment. I don't think it's the first time we've, we've heard that um, people have been calling for warning lights on the bridge, is it? No, Kathy, no, could you find it out? Could you get some... First time, it's not the first time captains have been calling for warning lights, no. No, no. I want to know whether we've ever reported that fact. Yeah, I'm sure we in have. In the inquiry so far? Yeah, I'm certain we have. Nice, but don't be... To make absolutely certain whether they have or haven't, a quick call to news information gets a researcher to check the file in question. In seconds, he's able to reassure them. They had reported it before. Cathy, we're going to probably restructure the running order. It's not quite right now. The stronger story is still Guinness. Piggott may well now move down. South Africa, well, we'll think about. Would you like to think of a way we can bring that together into a decent sequence? in part yeah. one. Think yeah. also about the changes we could make in part two. Start on 31, Baker, reader in close-up, cut to Quantel 5000 with scanner three, animate Quantel on a page, turn to 35, civil service standby, which is from TX. Page 40A, extradition standby. We then go to 41, Heisel, which will be a reader in close-up. We then go to 42, and 43, Kimberley, Main, which have moved down from 36 and 37, and they are, as before, reader with inset from Scanner 1 and TX. In the studio gallery, Questions with only 40 please, minutes before they go on air, the, the director has just begun does. rehearsals. Right. Um, so that's the first one. That's standby scanner, change. Right. Change. Oh, these are all messed up. Right. Eight minutes Change. to go. Sue Lawley has just finished working on the script and gets That's ready for half an hour of live yeah, television, with that. many parts of the show Mark, not ready. Can we cut up camera two for Sue, please? Sometimes, even as I'm reading the introduction to the first story, I can hear them in my ear saying to the videotape operator, have we got VT26, have we got that story? One can turn them off, but the trouble is if you turn them off, you don't know what's going on. Oh, my God. David, Nick. Yes, Nick. Can we have uh, studio out on floor monitor five, yes, please? Yes, Nick. Can you just leave me for a moment, please? I will get what I can, but there's a huge change in the running order here. So there's no changes on the scanner three on page 26. Six minutes to go. The words the and the new beginning to the programme still hasn't been tried out. God, heavens above. Kathy, David. Yeah, does Kimberly stay down at 42 and 43? Thank you. Stand by VT20. Run VT20. Five, four, three, two. The top of the six o'clock news, we often haven't got our lead story in, even as we go on air and the signature tune is playing. I might, at that point, receive an instruction hand to Nick to pick up on the second story and we'll come back to the one later on. We are, we are literally living hand to mouth. That is the nature of six o'clock news, because the day is still happening and I need to know what's going on. Sue and Nicholas Mix, Q, Sue. Good evening, the headlines of Coming to Quantel. Former Guinness boss Ernest Saunders has appeared in court. Cut. He was charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice. Run A. Five, four, four. Anime three, Quantel. Two. Keep going, Sue. One, zero. All right, stop, please, everybody. Back to the top. Back to the top. Um, Sue sounds extremely funny to me on that microphone. 30 Thank seconds you. to air. Stand by TX, A, B, C, and D in that order from five seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. On air, everybody. But the show is still five minutes too long, and more stories are coming in. Let's bring the camera four next.
the 6 o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Guinness boss, tell. Ernest Saunders, has appeared in court. Cut. He was charged with attempting to pervert the course of justice. Anime Quantel. So tonight, the fortunes of a Run D. Runner. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Anime Quantel. Today, the Duchess. I'm going to camera two and scanner one for page ten. Cuts and cue Sue. 30 Thank you, everybody. Guinness Long. The man at the Kid. center of the Guinness scandal spent last night in a Isn't police search. Guinness cell in London. Guinness Long. It's four months since Mr. Saunders was dismissed to say that the Guinness Four months, many weeks of which he spent in a clinic in Switzerland. Yesterday he was arrested Run by the Five, four, three, two, one, zero. I saved one forty. Falsification of documents. At the end of the hearing, Mr. Saunders was released on bail into the custody of the Mr. Stephen Ralph. He has until Tuesday to to save a bail of half a million pounds. Lester Pickett, the former champion jockey, has been sent for trial at the Old Bailey on 12 charges of fraud involving income tax and VAT returns. The leaders of South Africa's black people have been voicing their despair the outcome of the country's election. The result is a good one for President Boerta. For the moderates, the one optimistic note was the support it's change. by Dr. Dennis Worrell, the former ambassador to London. Stand by TX. Thank you. short of toppling one of the National Party's most powerful figures. Our correspondent Michael Burke reports on the result and its implications. Zero. Cut. My sincere apologies, Sue. Hold on a second, I'll talk to you. Okay, let me know as soon as you can. Turn this into 27. Yeah. Right, so you're on the South African. Yes. Piece, uh, we go to election. 22 next. down, right? Yes, we go to 26 and 27 next. 26 and 7. From that to Baker 31. Right. Drop 33 and 4 now. 33 and 34 have gone, everybody. So we go to 31. From there we go right to. to uh, the standby expedition, which is 40A. So drop so 39 and 40. What about 35? Um, sorry, wipe to 35. That's just I don't have a 35 30. at all. Have we got that 35 yet? Can you tell me what the story is? It's gangs of youth throwing um, stones, yes. pressure bombs. I mean, and is it really serious? Well, it looks pretty. A new story. It needs checking out. I'm having a bit of difficulty hearing here, folks. Right, next is Ferry Wayne, page 45. Now, would you tell me what promos you're running? Chris, listen, I'm being offered Can stuff out of the promos, promos, really? I obviously want to... No, hold on a second, David. I obviously want to want to go uh, to some Belfast pictures. So long as it's not just an excuse to show more violence in Belfast. Thank you, matey. Bye -bye. Right, we're going to do that Belfast story. Promo. So give me, the, give me that, give me that. Just hold on a second, Dave. Run the first one, definitely, and I'll confirm in a couple of seconds. Bob, I need to know the second one. We will do it under Wayne. It was only a glimpse, he said. I saw only the head Just on the children. Just have 30 seconds now. 30 seconds to check very well. Sure it was Our words on this continue giving evidence Give tomorrow. me a copy of the promos quickly. Counting and you have no powers. OK, you're going to use the eight, prisons promo, not the Siberia. Now, Bob. Five, four, Mr. Ruddock will continue giving evidence two, tomorrow. A director of Townsend Torreson, the owners of the Herald of Free Enterprise, has admitted Five minutes over, right? Yeah. Including Bell. So the captain of the Herald, David Lewis. Does that include 79 and 80? No. Run 79 and 80. It doesn't include 74 and 75. How long? Are, which is two. No, I don't want to drop those yet. Just tell me how long 79 and 80 are. Super. Run the prisons promo, drop the right. Siberian it's one. We run Heart and Prisons, TX, as the promos. After nine. On Belfast, which I'll tell you about later. After nine, we go to 56. The hearing continues tomorrow. Christopher Wayne reporting. Later in the programme, Gary Hart misses a beat. The Donna Rice scandal drives the Democrats' front runner back to his family. Those were the promos. They've still several minutes to lose to come out on time. The headlines tonight, the former jockey Lester Piggott has been sent for trial at the Old Bailey on 12 charges of fraud involving income tax and... Both change. In South Africa, Black I'm going to camera three and scanner one for 50 hard next. The the whites only election. Can somebody give me a VT on 51? Cut and cunic.
Stand by to the fortunes of Senator Gary Hart, the Democrats' front runner for the United States presidency. For Gary Hart, a night is a long time in politics. Whether or not he spent it with Donna Rice, the model and part-time actress who visited him at his home in Washington and earlier accompanied him in the motor yacht monkey business on a trip to the Bahamas. He denied wrongdoing. Gary and Lee Hart are going into seclusion, and the candidates' political fortunes are in a tailspin from which they have not yet recovered. Gary Hart is no longer the Democratic frontrunner. Backers and money are drifting away and looking for other candidates. The conventional wisdom here is that Hart is finished. This is Martin Bell for the 6 o'clock news in Washington. 56 and more rolls evening. So if you plan a night in for two and a half minutes, it can come in at three minutes. And you may not know that. Uh, until you go on the air. Your assistant comes in and tells you that, in fact, the program has worked out at 38 minutes, so you've got six minutes of stuff to drop. You have to take out a, a number of stories which make a total of six minutes. Yeah, 85 is uh, 19 seconds. After all those last-minute changes, Bob now has to make even more to come out on time. Right, let me talk to you. Uh, have you got 66 here? Yeah? Yes, sir. Fine, drop 68 and 9 now. Right, 65, 66 has gone. Uh, sorry. You hope that a program is going to be 32, 33 minutes. Uh, you plan it fairly carefully when you do the running order and so on. But unfortunately, because of deadlines and the pressure and the difficulty of putting a program out early in the evening, uh, things never turn out quite as you hope they're going to. That's why you get the chaos. Industry to do privatised. The offer closed at 10 o'clock. 79 and 8. Sorry, I'm um, 74 and 5, 68 and 9. And this other late story, what was it, page 85? I do. But sorry, that's the part of my drop. Look, 255. You said three and a half. No, no, it's not enough. Look, let's go through it again very, very quickly. Let's go through very, very quickly. If I do um, Wales coal, I cannot reach three and a half minutes, can I? If you do Wales coal, shares and pounds. Yeah, quickly. Please add it together very, very quickly. I have to decide now, okay? Uh, I want to guarantee I cannot go over that. Three, two, one, zero. Very quickly. Drop 74 and 5 now. 74, 75. You're going got, on then to 79. Next. Two to read 79. Camera two and scanner one. 79 Wales is next. Let's look and see it's Wales Cole. Am I dropping 85 as well? Oh, look, come on. Just, just tell me. Drop, drop it, yeah. Yeah. What page is that? 85. In any case, it broke the bridge between the royals. No, it didn't. Stand by TX with Wales Coal. They met the young patients there and were shown some of the modern techniques which treat conditions which until recently were regarded as incurable. Our court correspondent Michael Cole reports on their visit. The princess went to meet two brothers who both had major surgery on their heads. One minute right, on next this. page is 86, Phantom, Nick to read, camera three and scanner one. Right, Sir David, can yeah. you put page 85 back in, please, next story. 85 is back in, everybody. 85 is back in. We'll give it to Sue. Sue, camera two, close up. 85, Blakely, and a scanner three, camera Blakely. Well done. The actor Thank you Colin Blakely much. has died in a London hospital at the age of 56. He was suffering from leukemia. Cut Q. Stand by TX with Phantom Smart. Thank you. Michael, it is 28. Hero's welcome when he returns to the West End musical The Phantom of the Opera. One minute left on this one. So that should make us about right. Discharged officially from hospital this time and congratulating understudy number two, James Patterson, who was plucked straight from the chorus to play the Phantom for a fortnight and earned several standing ovations in the process. Although he's fully recovered, so it's you hold to the words of the night and then it's a quick cut to Sue Cam 2. 10, and that was the six o'clock news on Thursday, the seventh of May. So it's just the first two quotes. After Dennis Warrell has become the first nine votes, counting out twenty. Super. Nineteen. Lose it, Anime Pontel. Sixteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Super. Twelve. Eleven. Ten. Go take. Eight. Seven. Mix to camera four. Six. Five. Four. Thank you, Mike. Three. Two. One. Zero.
Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Well done, especially TX having to move around. Yes, I'm sure it does, actually, after, after one second of overrun. Well, especially because I have 30 seconds extra to, to play with. Yeah. Did you? Well, it would have been disastrous. It is quite stressful, but uh, in the end, if it weren't stress that I enjoyed, I wouldn't do it. I adore live television. There's that wonderful feeling that this is it. It's, it's up to me now. They're going to tell me what to do. I've got to keep it calm. I've got to deliver it as if I haven't got a care in the world. That's the challenge. That's the job. That's what I love.